Terrific. Why don't we go ahead and get started? I want to welcome everyone here to the Atlantic Council. I'm Damon Wilson, Executive Vice President here, uh, and just delighted to welcome you all here for a strategy session with the Foreign Minister of Latvia, Edgar Zrinkevich. This is a terrific opportunity. We've had, uh, the minister and I were just joking, we've seen each other so frequently over the past several weeks and months, uh, but it's also in part because of the role that this minister has been uh, playing in helping to shape uh, debates that are taking place in Europe and within the alliance. And that's what we want to focus on today. Um, last year and the year before, we worked quite closely with the minister as well. We're delighted to have the ambassador here uh, with whom we worked on really a strategy for Europe's east as the European Union was grappling with the eastern partnership. And I see today's conversation as a continuation in, in that uh, conversation with an emphasis now on the focus, the focus on the road to Warsaw and the Warsaw Summit. Um, while we're still looking east, uh, given the change in the security landscape, uh, we're here discussing these issues in the wake of Secretary Carter's, Ash Carter's announcement of 3.4 billion in new resources to bol bolster deterrence uh, in Europe, uh, and in the wake of a NATO ministerial that took up these issues, but we'll still with a very heavy agenda as we head towards the NATO summit, and that's what we look forward to hearing from you today, Mr. Minister. There's a debate that continues to brew within the alliance about the nature of our presence in the Baltics, how we actually capture an effective set, a sense of deterrence within the alliance. Is resilience an appropriate set of issues for uh, NATO to take up itself? And how, at the end of the day, does the alliance help project stability uh, uh, on its peripheries, which are uh, very much unstable today. Um, we have a remarkable guest, someone who's been a dear friend and colleague in many jobs, but has been in this job, I think, since 2011, and therefore has seen the ups and downs uh, and back and forths of, of all the debates across the transatlantic space. Today, we look forward to profiting from you and your views on how to think about moving forward uh, to the Warsaw Summit. You're here in an auspicious time. We, uh, re we've released today, as you might have seen in the Financial Times, uh, a report that is a sampling from alliance leaders from key allied countries about the European defense pillar and where European key European allies are going on their defense commitments post Wales. Uh, so with that, uh, Mr. Minister, let me turn it over to you. We're starting the session on the record. Uh, after the minister's comments, uh, we'll excuse the camera and we'll go into uh, a private conversation so we can have a family, uh, a family conversation on the way forward. Please, Mr. Minister. Well, Damon, thank you very much. And uh, it is really great to be back in Washington. And it's really great to be also back in the Atlantic Council. The last time I was here, it was uh, January 2015 when we are doing the event uh, as part of our EU presidency. And as we were joking with Damon, we are meeting all over the place, but never, almost never in Riga or Washington. It can be Munich or Brussels or Vilnius or, I don't know, some other country. But I also want to thank you all for coming here. I see many very good friends and many familiar faces uh, with whom I have been working also in many different capacities as like also, you have been in very different capacities. And indeed, uh, I have to say that um, um, I'm here to discuss uh, issues that Damon already had mentioned. That is uh, where we are heading as the alliance, especially taking into account that in a little bit more than four months, there is going to be a very important, to some extent, probably a very critical summit in Warsaw. I also should admit that, Damon, your great work has been already all over the Latvian press. So which means that when I come back from Washington, I will be grilled uh, who is actually telling the truth, me saying that Alliance is doing what it can. And of course, we are fighting uh, hard to really, um, let's say, get decisions in Warsaw that would correspond to some, uh, to our understanding, very important decisions. The first, I think that uh, we all understand that the situation as it started to develop in spring 2014 with more assertive, very much revisionist Russia breaching international law actually threatening in some of high uh, official speeches that uh, the so-called Russian world uh, is the concept that provides 
for the right to Russia interfere with what, whatever and whatever country it could be where they think or they may imagine that uh, their interest is being uh, somehow neglected or actually their interests are being affected. So from that point of view, we have seen decisions by the Alliance uh, in April 2014 in Wales Summit in September 2014, those decisions and those measures taken going into the right direction. However, I think that only slowly we realized that we all are in this new normal situation for a very long time. And that uh, the Alliance, also its member states, including Latvia, should embark on the way which sometimes has been referred as revival of the alliance, its core function, the Article 5, uh, should be taken really serious and we should not exclude any scenario even if we think that it is uh, not possible. We have had already a couple of scenarios that have been dismissed many times as unrealistic and to some extent they have come true. So our basic expectation, and that's the message I'm trying to pass all around the town here, I think that uh, I have bored already so many people telling the same message, but our message is, first, we do believe that uh, Summit in Warsaw should uh, make a very clear statement that uh, NATO and its allies are committed to a long-term presence at the eastern flank uh, and allies are committed and understand that uh, if we want really to tackle the challenges of 21st century, be it both traditional or so-called hybrid warfare challenges, that this uh, alliance is ready to provide credible deterrence at its east, or wherever needed, uh, if situation arises also in other parts of the alliance. Second, we do believe that while there have been uh, right decisions taken, and we are very grateful to all allies who are contributing, their troops, United States, our European allies, but we believe that uh, the current numbers, and we are currently talking about company plus, because those numbers are also uh, floating depending on what type of exercises we have, what type of, uh, um, uh, let's say, um, presence we have also from our European allies, but we do believe that those numbers are not yet sufficient to fulfill credible uh, deterrence and we, I think, all understand that it is much, uh, let's say, easier and also, to some extent, I would say, cheaper to provide credible deterrence rather than actually to face some consequences. So from that point of view, uh, we have come up with some uh, proposals. We believe that uh, NATO should address some critical issues, like uh, one is the decision-making, we do believe that uh, we still need to find the ways how uh, NATO commanders can be the first responders if there are some uh, challenges to any of NATO countries. Of course, it's going to be political decision about Article 5, but we still believe that there could be some improvements also when it comes to the decision making. Second, we do believe that well, air policing or air patrolling mission that has started in 2004 uh, is great mission and that has helped a lot, but we still need to uh, also speak about credible aid defenses and also to work out how we can tackle some of those challenges that have been so nicely referred by the Atlantic Council study some weeks ago. They have been also run study there have been also great BBC movie about the British capabilities and the decision making. So we, we feel that this uh, public discussion is also taking momentum and I think that it is very important that we address some of key issues that uh, also 
are relevant to uh, decision-making process uh, up to NATO summit in Warsaw. The third, we definitely speak uh, and we would love to see more uh, also clarity on some issues. I will probably refer more in detail after the public session is over, but I think that prepositioning of uh, necessary uh, military equipment and material is very important. That sends also a very strong message, but it also has a practical meaning. And here I can really uh, welcome the decision uh, by Secretary of Defense uh, Carter, the decisions actually that have been taken by NATO defense ministers. But we all understand that those are laying a good ground for the further work, but we still need to address some of details. And also, uh, finally, uh, yes, in December we have got uh, unanimous approval of NATO hybrid warfare strategy. And it actually provides for the uh, legal and political uh, way how to address also what we call hybrid warfare elements. So actually the Article 5 would be applied not only in the traditional way, but also if we feel that actually uh, some of hybrid warfare elements are being uh, deployed and that we need to address them also in a collective way. But again, here uh, we still need to work out more uh, the ways, the scenarios, the plans, how to uh, tackle those issues. My final point is not about NATO or transatlantic link. My final point is about uh, the fact that most probably most of you have noticed that we in the European Union and in Europe at large are undergoing the period what I would describe as a perfect storm. And of course you are having your own fun here in the United States called the election year, <laughs> which is not probably the stormy year, but I do believe that uh, we should not uh, neglect also the fact that while we are sometimes preoccupied with many different very uh, pressing issues uh, like migration in Europe, British referendum on staying or leaving the European Union, uh, the overall uh, discussion within European Union about how multiple speed EUs we are going to have. Uh, it is very important not to lose the focus uh, from what's happening in the Europe's East not to lose the focus what's happening in the Europe South, not to lose also American involvement on the European continent, especially in, in this year. And uh, to some extent, uh, yet again, I have been in many jobs previously, we were talking from time to time about the challenge to our transatlantic uh, bond, about the challenges to Europe, to, to NATO, um, ten years ago there has been great talk about NATO searching for new competencies. There was this famous slogan, if NATO doesn't go out of area, then it's <coughs> going out of business. I think this time we have a different story. I think that if NATO doesn't go back to its core business, it may go out of business at all again. So that's what I <coughs> have as the opening remark today. And I would be very happy to engage in what Damon has called uh, my family business now. That's right. That's right. Terrific. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister.